video tutorial on pivotal quantities and hypothesis tests in R. Actually, we're not going to do any R today, or on this video, uh, but we're going to talk about what the ideas are. So, we want to be able to do hypothesis tests. So, the first thing we're going to need to do is come up with what's called a pivotal quantity. And a quantity, a pivotal quantity, has the following properties. It's a function of our data, so we're going to need some data involved in this. Uh, it has some unobservable parameters, which ultimately we're going to try to make conclusions about. This function has a probability distribution, and the probabilities distribution does not change with the values of the parameter. So, or the really the data. Okay, so here's a simple example that you've all seen before if you've taken any statistics class. This is always the classic example. Suppose I have some data that's pulled from a normal distribution with a mean of mu and a standard deviation of sigma. Then z equal to this formula here, x bar minus mu divided by sigma divided by the square root of n, has a normal distribution with mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. First thing to notice, it's a function of the data via x bar. Okay, its distribution is known. If you look at the side of the other twiddle there, it is a normal and its mean is zero and a standard deviation of one. And it doesn't matter what values mu or sigma are, the distribution is still a normal zero one. And that's the idea of a pivotal quantity. This is something that we can put together that's function of our data and allows us to move between the data, the hypothesis, and some probability. Uh, another example that you might see as well is if you use the central limit theorem, doesn't matter what the distribution is, uh, provided it has a mean and a variance, then this test statistic, or uh, pivotal quantity t, which will ultimately be a test statistic, uh, is approximately normal 0, 1. Doesn't mean it's exactly, but it's approximately, and it's pretty close, so it allows us to be used. Uh, so x bar is a function of the data. The distribution is known, at least approximately, and also it doesn't depend on what mu is because we're using s, which is our uh, standard deviation from our sample, instead of sigma because we don't know that. And we can use this for a basis of a test statistic. So, a test statistic brings together three items. It's very similar to a pivotal quantity. It brings together the idea of our data, so we're going to collect some data. We have a hypothesis that we're actually interested in testing, and the test statistic better depend on it. And it has a probability distribution. If it doesn't have all three, then it's not a test statistic. Okay? So, here's an example again. It looks almost exactly the same as before. Um, here, x bar and s are functions of the data, mu is from the hypothesis, and normal 0, 1 is our probability. So this has all three of that we're looking for. If we go to the next example, you've seen this before, uh, if it comes from a normal distribution, uh, then uh, here we can say uh, for small samples uh, that it f follows a t distribution when we use s instead of sigma. Uh, this is known as student's t. Again, we have mu from the hypothesis, x and s are functions of the data, and the t distribution with new degrees of freedom is the probability. All right, we've also seen this one with the central limit theorem, if you've taken a previous statistics course. You're interested in estimating a population proportion, so you can model that as a binomial. Uh, each person gets one answer, and uh, the probability of success is what we're interested in. That's the p we're interested in. Here, uh, p hat is a function of the data. It's the number of successes over the number of people we asked. Uh, p is from the hypothesis, often will have a zero on it. And n, uh, normal zero one, is at least approximately the probability distribution when n is large. Okay, so quick review of hypothesis tests. Hypothesis tests is where we wish to choose between two hypotheses. So. H0 is the null hypothesis. That's what the zero stands for, null. Uh, and it's our state of disbelief. HA is the alternative hypothesis, and this is what we wish to show. So often you want to say, I want to show that uh, this drug uh, lowers blood pressure. Okay, that's the alternative, because you're saying what you want the drug to do. The null hypothesis is the opposite of that. It's the skeptic. It's saying, no, I don't think that that's true. Proof. Prove to me that it is. So you have these two uh, opposing ideas here. One is saying it is true. The other one's saying it's not true. And what we would do is we would draw a simple random sample from the population of interest, calculate the test statistics under the null hypothesis, and determine if the data is likely or unlikely, usually measured by a p-value. 
Okay, so here's a quick review of everything you probably never learned about a, uh, a hypothesis test, or if you have learned about it, uh, this is my seven uh, steps. Some people have different numbers. But the first thing is, is you have a hypothesis. Here, I've just given you one. Notice there's, uh, this is a one-sided hypothesis. There are also two-sided hypotheses. Uh, you have a significance level alpha, and this is the probability of a type 1 error, which is the probability that you accidentally say that the alternative is true when the null is actually true. So uh, being a skeptic, you wouldn't want to accidentally say that the alternative is true because you're trying to get evidence otherwise. Um, I usually think of this as the proportion of the time you're willing to be wrong on a problem like this. And, and I put it in the type 1 sense. So how important is the question? That's what the significance level is. If it's really important, then you should have a really small number because I don't want to be off, uh, wrong very often. So, uh, so keep that in mind. Uh, the test statistic is what we've been talking about. This is how we're going to take that data and turn it into a probability. Okay. Uh, the decision rule is saying if we get a p-value, which is equal to the probability that our test statistics is greater than uh, the actual one observed, if it's less than alpha, then we reject in favor of H naught or in favor of HA. Uh, the next step is actually this is where you actually collect your data. Okay? Everything before is what you should do before you ever think about collecting data. Design your experiment. Determine how you're going to analyze it. Before you run out and just say, I'm going to collect a whole bunch of data and then end up at the position of, okay, how do I analyze this? So five is execute. Do it exactly like you prescribed. Six is you apply the decision rule. You're either going to reject H0 or you're going to not reject H0. And then you're going to write a conclusion in the terms of the context of the research question. Okay, in the next video, we're going to run down through this slide real quick. We're going to look at an example, and then we'll jump over to R, and we'll actually try to play with this idea inside of R. So, move on to the next video.